Good morning, everybody. So here I am getting ready to make my first wood turning video for you. And I wanted to show you that I'm inside my very messy shop. So please don't judge me on that. Uh, it's about, uh, what, 40 degrees on a Saturday morning in my shop. You can see my breath coming out. Got my kerosene heater on. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to actually walk you through all the steps on making a bowl from start to finish. And uh, I selected a very interesting piece of wood for you today. Um, let, me, let me get it for you. It is this piece of cherry that I actually found along the road about, oh, five years ago. And I've been waiting to cut into it. And I decided that today is going to be the day that I'm going to cut into this piece, kind of show you what I do to figure out how to get a good piece of wood to turn a ball and then take you through all the steps. So there'll be a lot of start and stop as I move things around and show you different parts. So I hope you stay tuned. I don't know how long the video is going to be, uh, but I think it'll be interesting. So let's get started. So the first step in any project is picking the right wood that you want to use for the project. If I'm making a bowl or a plate, a mug or a candlestick, there are certain kinds of woods I look for, certain structures of the wood, whether it's straight for a candlestick or whether it's uh, kind of wide for a mug or even wider for a bowl or a plate, if it's thinner for a plate. Uh, today, I want to make something different. I want to make something kind of unique and show you guys um, what I look for in wood and wood that has character. I want to make something that I can take to a show and kind of make like a show piece. I have a show coming up in a couple of weeks and I like to make some pieces that really stand out. So I want to take you through this piece of wood here and show you what I'm looking for, why I picked it, and take you through the cutting process and cut a couple of pieces and explain why I cut them that way. So here's my piece of cherry that I found along the road and I liked it because it's unusual. It has one branch here, has another branch here, has another branch here, and then this was the main trunk of the piece, and then there's some branches that branch off there. So anytime there's a branch that separates, right here is going to be some really good figure. And there'll be good figure in here, and this section will be some good figure. So what I'm probably going to end up doing is cutting this piece off right here making something out of this and cutting right here and making something out of this and trying to figure out if these two pieces are going to stay together or not it looks like they're probably going to come apart right there so i may make something out of this and maybe save this for a smaller project like a bottle stopper or a pendant or something else um, if this is solid right here I will probably end up making something out of this and then maybe just reserving this little branch for something. Or I might just throw it out. I have plenty of wood. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to my bandsaw right there. And I'm going to start cutting up this piece. And I'll probably cut here first and kind of balance it out because it weighs about maybe 100 pounds. So I want to be safe and not... Uh, break my bandsaw or actually cut my fingers off. So uh, I guess that'll be the next step. So before I start, I should really say, make sure you follow all of your safety rules. Don't necessarily do what I do, because sometimes I'm not the safest thing and I have scars to prove it. Um, wear your safety glasses, your hair and protection, use filters, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm gonna show you the way I do it instead. So here I am at my bandsaw. I'm going to make the first cut, which is this section right here. Uh, I have a 14 inch bandsaw. It's going to be very noisy. I have air collection on, so there won't be any sound through this part of the video. Uh, hopefully you won't see me twist the blade and hopefully this piece will all stay intact. Um, again, this is not going to be the safest thing, so turn your eyes away if you're, if you're afraid of seeing things that aren't so safe. But I'm going to go ahead and start making my cuts.
So I didn't show you the whole entire cutting process. It took a while, but I got some beautiful pieces out of that uh, multi-branched item. So I want to show you some of the things I'm looking at when I'm looking at it. Uh, what I look at is the end of the piece to see is there different coloring in it, is there different designs in it, different waves of, of, of the wood. So you can see in this piece here, you have a really dark area and you have some light areas up here. The grain, there's this little pattern right here that's going to give me some good figure. This piece I really like. Uh, this piece here has the dark and the white. It has a little bit of this black line, which is called spalting. And then it has some figure coming right down the middle of this piece, which is going to turn out beautiful. This piece here is probably going to break off as I turn. This is the other part of that. Um, these two pieces actually were split in half. So you can see that they're mirrors of each other. But you can see the multiple colors that are in it. You see this dark line right here. Uh, this is an area of concern whether this is going to crack the whole way through on both sides, so we'll see. I'll turn one piece, and then depending on how that piece turns out, I'll either turn this piece as one big bowl here, or maybe I'll make uh, one small piece here, and maybe another smaller piece here. Uh, these pieces over here also have a lot of figure and a lot of coloring. So even though this is cherry and you would expect a light orange reddish kind of wood, you can see that these pieces have a lot of dark in them. And I think a lot of it is because it's been sitting around for a couple of years and it's been drying. And I really like this piece with this dark here and it kind of shades dark all over in this really, really nice dark center. So I don't know which of these pieces I'm going to turn first, so I'm going to think about it. And then I'm going to show you the next step in um, getting the piece mounted on the lathe and what we do. So I chose this piece right here. And the next step you do is you take a compass and you draw a circle on the best piece of wood that you think you're going to make a bowl out of. So I drew a compass, or I took a compass, and I drew my biggest circle. And I want to try and get as much of this figure as I can. I'm actually going to go right in this crack line, so I'm going to see if this is going to blow apart on the lathe. The next thing I'm going to do is take it back to the bandsaw, and I'm actually going to cut the circle out on the bandsaw, and then I'll bring it back to the lathe. Okay, so I finished cutting out this piece of wood to get ready for the bowl that I'm going to make. And some of you may be asking, why are you cutting it round on the bandsaw if you use a lathe to get things round? The reason for that is the rounder I can make it before I put it on the lathe, the less work I have to do with these tools over here, uh, you know, to try and make it round. So it saves me some time. And it also gives me a chance to take a look at the wood before I put it on there to figure out where the problems are going to be. Right away I saw that as I was cutting it, a large chunk of bark fell out and discovered that this piece is where some of the branches came together. So I'm a little worried about how secure this piece is going to be if it's going to crack. And there's also a large crack right here that follows through that piece. So I'm trying to figure out if this whole chunk is just going to fly off and hit me in the face or if it's going to hold together. I kind of think it's going to hold together but I am worried that this whole crack right here follows a pattern. So we'll see what I'm going to do about that. But I am very excited about the coloring. I don't know if you can see it. I'll kind of hold it up a little closer. There is a lot of color and a lot of variation in the wood in this piece. So I'm really excited to see what this piece is going to turn out to be. And the next step is mounting it on my lathe and making the first initial cuts. So what I have to decide is which piece is going to be the top and which piece is going to be the bottom. And I think what I'm going to do is make this the top of the bowl, and then this will be the bottom of the bowl. And the bottom of the bowl will have more of the variation and the color in it, and that's what's more eye-catching. And I'll turn away this part here, even though I'm really excited about that really dark part. Uh, I'll have to turn that away and see if this is going to hold together. So if you watch other wood turning videos on the internet, there are different ways of holding your uh, blank onto the lathe. 
I like to use something called a face plate. And what this does is this allows me to securely screw this into the wood. And when I put it on the lathe, I don't have to worry about it flying off. I am worried that this whole chunk is going to fly off, so this is one way of keeping at least half the bowl on the lathe if it does, uh, does explode on me. So the next thing I do is go ahead and mount it on the lathe. I'll show you a little video of that. Um, time to turn the music on, uh, play some punk rock, and go ahead and start turning. Before I start, I just want to give everyone a little understanding on how a lathe works. So this is the wood that's on a face plate, and I screw it onto the lathe. And once it's on here, this wood will now spin toward me, and it goes pretty fast. So let me show you what it looks like on the low speed. So that's how fast it comes toward you. And here's how the lathe works then, is once the wood is spinning toward me, I will take this tool called a tool rest, and I will adjust it so it sits close to the wood, uh, depending on the angle that I want to cut. And then I will use different wood cutting tools. This is a bowl gouge, kind of show you the edge on that. So it's somewhat sharp, uh, not exactly razor sharp at this point, but it is very sharp. So as the wood is coming toward me, I am cutting into the wood. So as the wood spins, um, you will see that this chisel will take off little bits of the wood as it comes toward you. And my goal is to get it into a uniform shape. And then I'll use other tools, including um, a scraper tool and also another type of skew. And I will go ahead and make this into the shape that I want to make it. The question I always get asked is, do I know what the shape is I want to make when I put the wood on? And the answer is not really. Uh, this bowl, I think what I'm going to do is try and make something a little rounded on the top. So it will have a little round on the top, a little round on the bottom, kind of like an, um, I guess, an oval kind of shape. But I'm really concerned to see how this holds together before I do that. So... As I'm cutting it, depending on what this crack is going to do, will determine the shape that I'm going to make the bowl. So let me go ahead and get my safety gear on. I wear a uh, face mask, and if you look at it, you can see there's a lot of dents in it already because the wood comes up, and if the wood flies off the lathe, it will hit you in the face. So I have to go ahead and be careful and protect myself. I've gotten hit in the face a couple of times. Uh, this is very, very hard, even though it looks very thin. Uh, it does protect me very well. So let's go ahead and get started. So I finished my initial turning on the outside. I just want to show you what I'm looking at here. Uh, first thing I want to look at is this void and find out how deep is it going to be? Is it secure? And as I put my finger in there, um, it is a very solid piece of wood, so I'm not really worried too much about it splitting right here. There's another void that opened up right here, which is kind of interesting because I do like voids in my wood. But as you can see, as I'm turning it around, it's a little rough because of the openings here. Sometimes the gouge can't catch right away, so it rips the wood. It rips the wood here instead of uh, actually cutting the wood. I'll sand all that out. Um, but you could see the grain variation in this piece, and the colors in this piece are just phenomenal. Uh, this section here, um, I'm not as worried about it splitting right now. Uh, when I do the inside of this piece, I'm actually going to wrap it with tape and hold this together because I do think as I thin the walls out, this is going to uh, open up and it may actually split the piece. So I'll figure out what to do with that once the wood is once it's done. But you can see the uh, again the color variations in this wood are just awesome. 
So this is going to be a really, really cool piece. You can see I kind of started to round out the top here. I don't know how round I want to make it. I think I'm just going to make it a little bit round and then uh, use this opening in the wood to really make it a feature. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to work on sanding the outside and then I'm going to uh, make something on the bottom to actually hold this as I flip it around and do the other side. So that's the next thing you'll see. So here is the bowl after I've sanded it with 150 grit uh, sandpaper. I use my orbital sander because of the voids. If I was sanding, normally the lathe is on and I'm sanding this way. I'm just worried about catching something in this void. So I use that and this is an example of what it looks like once it's sanded. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of oil on this just so you can see what I already see in my head and show you what it will look like once um, everything is, is done. So let me go ahead and put a little bit of oil on here and show you what it's going to look like. So now you can start to see some of the colors coming out what I'll do is I will go ahead and finish putting the rest of this oil on and then show you a video on what it looks like all right so I had the initial coat of oil on just to show the colors this is again what it looks like without oil and then as you put the oil on you can really see the variation in the color now as I finish this and I sand it down even smoother, some of these will pop out more. But as you can see, there's a lot of color variation in this wood. And it's going to be really exciting to see what it looks like when it's done. You can see the colors right here. Uh, there's really dark browns and there's a lighter brown and a more orange and regular cherry color. A little bit of black through it, which is really nice. Some spalting over here. And then another section of dark. This is probably maybe where a little branch came out. Um, and then over here on the top you have even more, a little bit more red and some black. So it's a really awesome looking piece. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish the bottom. And I'm going to put a little area in here that's going to attach to the other side so I can flip it around. And then I'll show you that and we'll start working on the inside. So now that I have the, the bottom uh, roughed out, because this is going to have a curved top, uh, what I did was I did one of these recessed uh, holdings in the bottom. And I'm using something called a chuck. This sits on the inside and expands. And then the teeth actually fit into that little recess there and prevent it from flying off the lathe. So that's the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put this on. And then we're going to start the really fun part, which is on the inside. Sometimes that happens. Uh, as you saw, this piece uh, flew off the lathe, <laughs> and it took me about 10 minutes to figure out where it rolled. Uh, I found it. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on, and we're going to try this again.
All right, so let me show you what I'm finding out so far in this bowl, which uh, it flew off the lathe twice so far. And the reason is because it's very soft on the inside. There's a lot of voids. And as I'm uh, doing this, I found out that right here, I don't know if you can see it very well, but this area right here is an old branch um, that grew into the, into the tree. So this whole piece is going to fall out and it's going to leave this huge hole, um, which is the hole that's right here that's coming in. So you see my finger going right through the bowl. So it's actually going to be a really nice um, void. Uh, but as I turn it away, that's an empty spot. So as I'm using the tools, I'm hitting wood, hitting empty spot, hitting wood, hitting empty spot. And it's causing my tools to jump around a lot. Uh, so if you see me kind of jumping around with the tools, that's what's going on with that. So I just wanted to start showing you that uh, when I'm starting to get on the inside, what I look for and decide what kind of tools I'm going to use to figure it out. So we'll get back to it, see how it turns out. Well, so here we are <laughs> at the bottom of the bowl. Um, a piece of wood, a void, actually ripped the bottom of the bowl out. So after all that work, um, this is what happened to the side. So uh, this is the uh, branch that I told you about and where I was worried it was going to fall apart. Actually, the voids, um, I actually like these two voids here. I'm going to rip them out and uh, get rid of all the bark on the inside and make them more see-through. And then around the side where I was worried about that big crack, it actually did not go through just barely, I don't know if you can see it, uh, to the inside. So actually the walls are only about um, that thick. I kept them a little bit thicker than I normally like to um, just to make sure that it didn't fly apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to finish the bottom of this and use this hole as part of the voids of the bowl and somehow make it look like it wasn't an accident. So if you happen to go to my show in April and you see this bowl with a hole in the bottom, remember it wasn't an accident. It was actually part of the design just between me and all of you that are watching. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the lathe again, and I'm going to show you how I finish the bottom of the bowl, and we'll figure out what we're going to do with that hole. And uh, maybe I'll plug it with something, or maybe I'll put, oh, I know what I'll do. Um, I will actually stitch it with some wood or some wire or something like that, and make it like a, like a bottom of a basket or something. That might be something kind of interesting to do. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I do that in the basement of my house. Uh, I don't do it in the garage. I uh, have a little area set up in my house where I do the finishing. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this down and uh, I'll rough it out. And then I'll show you what the finished bowl will look like before I go through and doing all the finishing. So I'm going to show you this. This is another uh, faceplate kind of thing that I have. This um, I like a lot because you can put a bowl in and then these rubber things will grip them and prevent them from flying out so you can work on the bottom of the ball when the top is already finished and the inside's already finished. I have different sizes of these so I'm going to go ahead and put on the really long ones that I have. Because this is a kind of curved ball I want to make sure it grabs in the middle so it doesn't fly out and fly through my garage door um, 20 feet away which can happen. So I'm going to go ahead and get that together and then I'll show you how I finish the bottom.
So sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. And this is an example where it worked 75% of the way and then that last couple of percent it didn't. And you have this nice big hole at the bottom of your bowl. Um, I really like the bowl though. Uh, so I'm going to find some way of uh, hiding that hole. Well, not really hiding it, but um, using that hole in the design. Um, just kind of thinking in my head, I have some honey locust spikes Maybe I'll put some honey locust spikes across it. Uh, maybe I'll get some metal wire and do like a stitch in it. Or maybe I'll just leave it open and uh, it's a fruit bowl. You could still put fruit in there except maybe some really small lemons or limes that would fall through. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's a good bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and take some tools and get rid of some of this bark in these spots here and around the edge here and kind of clean this up. I'm going to keep this little piece of wood here because uh, I really like that little uh, piece of wood sticking out. And I'll clean up this crack a little bit. Maybe I'll make it uh, go through the bowl. Uh, there is, you can see on the inside, a little part of where that uh, crack came through right here. So maybe what I'll do is just kind of make it go through the whole way. And it does kind of come all the way down to the bottom. So it would be a really cool feature if I can go ahead and enhance that. So I'm not really worried too much about the bottom. Um, it happens. Uh, I could throw it away, but I think I could probably sell it. So um, uh, if anyone comes to my show in April at uh, Donegal High School, this bowl will be there. Um, if anyone wants to buy it before that, I don't know what the price would be. Um, make me an offer, I guess, would, would be a good good idea and I could ship it to you, uh, but it probably wouldn't be ready for another couple of weeks because I have to do some sanding and some, uh, I have to do a lot of sanding on the inside. Uh, I don't Normally I would take some sandpaper while it's running and sand the inside, but with this huge hole, my finger uh, could get caught and I could break my finger pretty easily. So that is it. I don't have a name for it, so let me know if you can think of a name. Um, I'm thinking of calling it Oops because that's what happened on the bottom. I try and name my bowls and uh, give them little little character. So hopefully you guys like the video. Let me know what you think if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll go ahead and keep making them if you guys like them. And I'll put them on my YouTube channel. And I'll put them on Facebook. And uh, thanks for watching.